focal length is a primary characteristic of any lens. Scientifically speaking, it's the distance between the optical center of your lens and your sensor measured in millimeters. Using lenses with different focal lengths can have dramatic effects on your final shot. It alters the angle of view, space compression, and depth of field. In fact, lenses are generally classified into different categories based on their focal length. The three main categories are wide angle, normal, and telephoto. Depending on who you ask, wide angle lenses fall between 24 to 35 millimeters, with those falling below 24 millimeters being considered super wide. Lenses with focal lengths between 35 and 70 millimeters fall into the normal category, with 50 millimeters being the most common. Telephoto lenses fall between 70 and 200 millimeters, with longer lenses being considered extreme telephoto. Lenses with different focal lengths will allow you to capture a wider or narrower snapshot of a scene. The circular image that your lens projects is known as the angle of coverage, however your sensor doesn't utilize this entire circle because it's a rectangle. An angle of view is the portion of the lens projection that your sensor actually captures. This can also be referred to as the field of view. Focal length has an inverse relationship to your angle of view and the magnification of the image. As focal length gets longer, the angle of view gets more narrow and individual elements in the scene become more magnified. Conversely, as focal length gets shorter, the angle of view gets wider and the magnification becomes lower. Put it in simple terms, shorter focal lengths have wider angles of view and less magnification and longer lenses have a narrower field of view with more magnification. Let's start with the characteristics of wide-angle lenses. They have a broad field of view, things appear smaller. Objects nearest to the camera will appear to be closer, and the faraway places will seem to be further than they actually are. However, this can work in your favor if you're needing to shoot in a small space with a wide-angle lens, you can have the capacity to get more in frame in that small space. Another characteristic of wide-angle lenses is the distortion created by the curve of the lens. It is especially easy to see when panning or tilting, horizon lines flex when tilting, and when panning, vertical lines bend. Some wide-angle lenses, more typically ones that are more expensive, are built with rectilinear correction. Rectilinear correction is designed to counteract distortion. Normal lenses, or lenses with focal lengths between 35 and 70 millimeters, fall into an area of view that mimics the human eye's field of view. Because of this, zooms that cover the range of 35 to 70 millimeters are great walking around lenses that will capture the world as you see it. With telephoto lenses, the longer the thrower zoom, the narrower the field of view and have a greater magnification. In essence, they capture a very narrow crop of the world. They require a much shorter shutter speed to avoid motion blur from the shake of the camera. It's best to use handheld shutter speed rules. These rules state that the shutter speed when shooting handheld should never drop below one over your focal length. Here's an example. If you're shooting a 70 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, then your shutter speed should not be less than 1 70th of a second. You might have heard of the term crop factor before. The crop factor is referring to the size of your camera's image sensor and its relation to a full frame image sensor. All lens focal lengths are based on the camera having a full frame sensor. A full frame sensor is designed to be the same size as 35 millimeter film. For a better understanding, here's an example. If you have a full frame camera and you put a 35 millimeter lens on it, it will capture the expected amount of angle of coverage that your lens projects, giving you a standard 35 millimeter angle of view. However, if you put the same lens on a camera with a smaller sensor, you will capture a smaller portion of the angle of coverage and this effectively creates a more narrow angle of view. This is referred to as a focal length multiplier or crop factor. The smaller sensor effectively crops the image that your lens is capable of projecting. While there is no change in actual focal length or angle of coverage of the lens, the effective focal length and angle of view changes. The smaller the sensor, the more the projected angle is cropped, the more narrow the effective focal length and field of view becomes. If you have a sensor that isn't full frame, you need to take this into account when you're choosing or using a lens. Knowing what field of view you require to get the shot you need is key. It's of the utmost importance what focal length of lens you choose. That choice will affect everything from what is in your frame to how those things feel in relationship to each other. Knowing if you have a cropped sensor, what its crop factor is, and what that means to the effective focal length of your lens will allow you to make the right choice when choosing a lens for any job.